God bless everyone. This is your brother Josh, and today I have a very special guest. His name is Oswaldo Lopez Jr., and he's from Puerto Rico. I met him several years ago when he came to preach at my church, where God used him powerfully in preaching, prophecy, and revelation. If any churches are looking to invite new preachers, I strongly recommend him. His info is in the description. Just be aware that he only speaks Spanish, so please have an interpreter available at the service. And Oswaldo has a powerful testimony about how he became involved in witchcraft, santeria, and paleria when he was just 13, only to later become tormented by the demons he made packs with. This will be truly eye-opening, so please give it a like and share it with others. Also, please subscribe so you can see more interviews I'll be doing with ex-witches, ex-Satanists, and people who went to heaven and hell. So without further ado, Brother Oswaldo, tell us your powerful testimony. Amen. God bless you, Brother Josh. The peace of God be with everyone. My name is Oswaldo Lopez Jr., and I am from Puerto Rico. I belong to the church. Not everyone is lost here in Attilo, Puerto Rico. My pastor is Carlos Steven Alvarez. I will start my testimony by saying that my childhood was filled with pain. I suffered during that time due to my parents' divorce. I didn't want my parents to get divorced, and that's where demons took advantage in my life. When I began to see my mother and father's suffering, seeing the destruction of their marriage, well, that's when my childhood took a dark turn. I had a lot of depression, anxiety, and thoughts that did not please the Lord. I had thoughts of wanting to end my life. I didn't want to live because I didn't want my parents to get divorced. My parents have a dark history. They weren't raised in church. My parents, my grandparents, my ancestors. They were raised in witchcraft, spiritism, santeria. Some work with palaria, which means they do rituals in cemeteries. Oftentimes with bones from cemeteries, most of my family had altars in their homes. Dark, scary altars with candles and statues, which did not please the Lord. They worshipped demons. But back then, I thought God was there, that it was good, because that's what I was taught back then about God, that it was all right to light candles and do witchcraft, and so my childhood progressed like this. I kept suffering. My father didn't give me love just rejection. My father treated my brother much better than me. He showed him more favor and he rejected me, which caused sadness, depression, and hate within my heart. Every time I saw my dad, I wanted to receive the same love and treatment, but when I didn't get that, my heart filled with great hatred and anger. My brother was treated well in every way possible, and that filled me with a lot of rebelliousness. Then I lived with my mother. My mother was less strict. She let me hang out with friends and allowed me to go to dance clubs and drink. Later on, since I was very young, my grandmother would give me cigarettes for me to smoke. And those things gave legal rights to demons over my life. You have to understand that demons are fed by our carnal addictions. And when I began doing those things, demons entered my life to the point where demons would visit me and transformed into bears. Other demons appeared as gargoyles, pulling my legs and arms, trying to pull me into a dark tunnel that I didn't want to enter, with ugly evil faces. As a child, I thought they were ghosts and monsters because that is how I had been taught. I thought they had been sent by other witches because that's how I had been raised and taught. Those demons would put symbols on my legs to create a pact with my life, which we cancel in Jesus' name now. But that caused a mark in my life. Although now I realize God was using that because the Lord was going to help me see the spirit realm since I was young and would help me use that knowledge to help others when I came to Jesus later on in my life. So time passed and that just created great fear within me. Because while some people just see shadows, I actually saw those demons clearly as they transformed into things like bears or gargoyles. We know that the Bible says that demons are spirits, and the Greek manuscript says that spirits don't have forms. 
but they take form so that we can learn to identify them in the spirit realm. They would take me to priests to remove those spirits from my life, and they would also take me to pastors to pray for me. But nothing happened because those pastors did not have authority. They did not have the anointing of the Holy Spirit nor the fire that's required to torment those demons. They They would bring me to prepare altars because I kept getting deeper into witchcraft. I started by becoming a spiritual son to a Santero priest in Dutuado in Puerto Rico, where there are more than 50 satanic churches that deal with Santeria and Spiritism, and that's where I visited those places to obtain a solution. Because all this produced great suffering in my life, I wanted to leave all that. Because I knew in my heart, even without knowing Jesus yet, I still knew I had been born to serve God. I just didn't know how. I began practicing witchcraft, santeria, and spiritism, thinking it would prosper my life. They would make me take baths in bitter plants and in sweet plants. They would do all kinds of rituals using witchcraft to remove that demon tormenting me. They would tell me that demon had left for a week, but it would return more strong than ever later. They said what was after me had chains on its hands and feet, and it chased me, dragging me more into drugs. I had strong addictions in my life. All this caused me to lead me to try to end it all. I tried three times to end my life. The first time I tried to take pills, but it didn't work due to God's mercy. It was God's mercy that enabled me to wake up the next day after taking those pills. The second time happened when I tried to throw myself off a second-story building. I started running on the roof towards the ledge, but my brother appeared out of nowhere and grabbed me. And he asked me what I was doing, and I told him that I didn't want to live anymore. The third attempt was when I was in my kitchen. I had searched for a knife so I could end it all. Then I found a knife, and as I raised it to my stomach to stab myself there, My brother appeared again and stopped me by grabbing me in a tight bear hug. He asked, Why do you want to end your life? Your life is very valuable. And all this happened due to me getting involved in the occult, in witchcraft, santeria, paleria. My grandfather actually had an altar in his house too. It was utterly terrifying. I was scared to go inside that room. And all these things happened because my family rejected the true living God. Later on, something else happened. I had to distance myself from my father because one day we almost got into a physical fight. And that caused more pain within me. It led me to almost end my life. But I kept doing witchcraft. At first, I had a small altar for witchcraft and santeria. But later I created a big altar. And I remember that sometimes I would stand there and read the Bible, reading psalms, and most of those were psalms of deliverance. Now I realized that I was declaring a prophetic word over my life, because in the future, God would set me free. So life kept going. I kept getting more into crime. I made many errors and enemies so much that someone actually tried to eliminate me. I also started to rob people. I even robbed my family so I could have money to feed my addictions. The addiction I had led me to become very rude to my mother and my brother. I'm also ashamed to admit that I actually introduced my younger brother into witchcraft too. I initiated him into the occult when he was very little. I mostly hang out on the streets from a very young age, drinking beverages and smoking a lot of marijuana so I could have peace. Jesus said the following about peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Smoking marijuana might give momentary peace. And some even use that as a medicinal plant. But Jesus said my peace is eternal and constant. So I kept practicing witchcraft. And I would make these circles of fire to repel spiritual attacks I would receive from other witches. I would make circles of fire. I would put crosses made of fire and I would dance over the fire. I would run back and forth and the fire would not hurt me. 
I would give freedom to Indian spirits to enter me and to the seven African principalities. And one thing I found interesting is that whenever I visited those evil churches in Puerto Rico, sometimes God would even use those people on certain occasions. This is hard to explain, but it was like God used their lips for a few moments and then would leave them. Because those witches would tell me, you're not destined to work with us. I don't know why you're here. You have a bright light over you, and there are multitudes that will follow you. You will work for the Lord. The spirits tell me you will preach the word of God and reach many youths. That is what they told me and I would reject it, because of the dark upbringing I had with my family. I mean, my father used to curse God, and I would curse God too, which created an atmosphere of curses over me. I wanted to stay in the world of witchcraft. But those evil people would keep telling me, Do not come to these places. You don't belong here. You have a bright light within you. And I want to return to my childhood for a moment. During my childhood, I was able to see lots of demons. They would appear as elves and pale people. They would appear as very old people and ghosts. One question, Brother Oswaldo. You say that demons would transform as ghosts. Did you ever see demons impersonating a deceased relative of yours? Because I hear that happens a lot. That demons transform into family members who passed away in order to confuse people. Yes, that happened. One time, a demon transformed into one of my deceased grandmothers and gave me a terrible scare. I tried using witchcraft to make her go away, but that didn't work. You can't fight demons with demons. They are part of the same kingdom of Satan. They work in unison. But later on, I kept advancing in witchcraft, and the time arrived when I was taken to Arundum Polero. He was a man who worked with the corpses and bones and ashes he would take from cemeteries. That powerful witch told me, You have to buy certain materials, Oswaldo. You must buy a black cape, a black rooster, some rum, a dark rum, not clear rum. Then we must go to a certain river. That river was called the River of the Witches. I was 17 years old at the time, and he told me, Those things coming after you are very strong and will end your life in three years. I give you three years before you're a goner. This angered me, and I cussed him out. I told him that he didn't have the authority to tell me when I would pass away. Only God had that power. But interestingly enough, in three years I accepted Jesus into my heart, so that which prophesied incorrectly. Because three years later, the Lord came into my life. But he didn't arrive while I was in church or in some revival service. The Lord came to me when I was playing basketball. It happened after a basketball game when a guy nearby heard me saying some pretty bad words. That guy asked, Oswaldo, when your body is sick, where do you go? I said, I go to the doctor. Then the guy asked me, where do you go when your soul is sick? I said, I don't know. Maybe Chango or Adala. He said, no. You go to Jesus Christ, the one who wants to change your life. And brothers, I didn't cry right there because of my hard heart. But I did cry when I got home later that day. A few weeks passed. I got into trouble on the streets and people were now looking to eliminate me and I got ready to do a serious job when I ran into that guy again at the basketball court and he told me, Oswaldo, tonight we have a special youth service and God is telling me he is going to change your story and that you will never be the same. And I said, I don't know. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to go to church and then fail the Lord. My mother was there and told me, don't ignore God's voice. 
Don't make him do things the hard way. Later on, the guy asked me again, What are you going to do? God keeps talking to me about you. Tonight is the night God is going to change your story. And I said, You know what? Fine. I will go. So I put on my satanic necklaces and got into the car with him. Then I started to tremble and cry. He then said, Don't worry. Nobody is going to kill you here. And I gave him a serious look while crying. And I wondered how he knew so many things about me. When I got to church, I told God, I don't know how to pray to you. I only know how to pray to pagan entities. I told God, if you are real, then change me. I don't want to be the same person anymore. I noticed the preacher kept looking at me, even though he didn't even know me. Then he said, Oswaldo, come up. Tonight is your night. Then he laid hands on me and I fell backward onto the floor, full of demons, moving like a snake on the floor, and I felt my mouth opening very widely, and my eyes went to the back of my head. Then I saw a pillar of fire in front of me, while a person began to speak in an African or Haitian tongue with authority to me. Then a wind came out of my mouth. From that moment, I was freed, and I have been able to verify what the Bible says in John 8.36. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And one more thing, Josh. I won my Father over for God. My Father is serving Jesus. And you know how I did it. It wasn't by speaking in tongues or prophesying. It was by bearing good fruit. Every time he insulted me and called me a homosexual, I would just lower my head and say, I am not going to make the same mistakes you made. Soon, my time will arrive. I did this until my father got saved and began to serve the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That's what God does. I learned to forgive him. There was reconciliation, and now we treat each other as friends. Oh, glory to God. And does your mother also serve the Lord? No, my mother does not serve God. She got saved, but left the Lord. My brother also got saved, but later left church, and began making satanic pacts, and now serves different demonic spirits. Please keep them in your prayers. Amen. Well, we will definitely pray and fast for them in the fasting chain that we're doing for God to save them. And I want to take this opportunity to invite everyone listening to join this fasting chain. I will be fasting and praying every day during 2024 for all the prayer requests that people send this ministry through the comments of my videos or through email. But if you want to join in, you can fast one or two days each week or one or two days each month. You can also fast when you're working. And really quick, I want to share a testimony about this. When I first began fasting during my job, one Christian woman told me that God would not answer my prayer request because I was not fasting correctly. I was supposed to fast while I was at my house or in my church, but not during my job. And this took away a lot of my faith. I began to have my doubts, and I considered stopping my daily fasts. I didn't tell anybody about this, but then the Lord sent this brother, Oswaldo, to preach at my church and spoke to me through him in prophecy. And the Lord told me, I am listening to all your petitions, and I am going to answer them all, some soon, some later, but eventually I will answer all the petitions from your fasts, so keep asking me. And if you're listening to this video right now, brothers and sisters, God is telling you the same thing. So keep praying and fasting for your petitions for days, weeks, months, even years. Eventually, the Lord will bring that miracle to your life. I also invite you to subscribe and hit the bell to all so you'll be notified of all upcoming interviews I'll be doing with more ex-witches, ex-Satanists, and other people who went to heaven and hell.
Also, please give this video a like and leave your prayer request in the comments. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.